Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We got a few stories for you today. Obviously, you guys saw the lead headline story. Timestamps are all down below. Uh, before we do that, I gotta remind you we do have a uh, couple of giveaways going on right now. Head down to the pinned comment or the description. We're also working on potentially partnering with someone to do another Switch OLED and or PlayStation 5 giveaway here. Uh, coming up here either at the end of this month or in the month of February. So pretty excited about that one as well. Uh, but let's, without further ado, get right into today's little bit of news. Uh, first up, the Activision Blizzard sale. See, we talked about it yesterday. Obviously, it was the biggest story to happen this year. It might be the biggest story to happen all year in gaming. Hello, a major console manufacturer buys up one of the largest video game companies in the world. That's going to be a big story. But interesting details are coming up from Wall Street Journal and several other places about what Activision Blizzard was trying to do before getting bought by Microsoft. So reports are out there now stating that Bobby Kotick, the current CTO, CTO, CEO, <laughs> not, C, not technical officer, uh, chief executive officer uh, of Activision Blizzard actually attempted to do two different things before contacting Microsoft because apparently they reached out to Microsoft themselves. The first thing they tried to do is buy up PC Gamer and Kotaku. Now, this is just what's being reported. PC Gamer and Kotaku are not denying this. They are just refusing to comment on the story, um, maybe because there was some truth in the contact. I have no idea. I think they just don't want to be associated with this story at all. But the bottom line is it looked like Bobby Kotick and, and, and Activision were attempting to buy up a couple major media outlets. Now, why would they be looking to do this? To change the narrative. That's the story anyways, is that Activision Blizzard obviously has a lot of controversy over the last year and they wanted to change the narrative. What better way than to buy up media outlets and literally control the messaging? Kind of weird, right? Beyond all that, they also reached out to Facebook slash Meta reportedly. Uh, they're now called, the, the parent company is now called Meta anyways. And uh, yeah, they were looking for Facebook slash Meta to buy out Activision Blizzard. And that obviously didn't come to fruition. And then as their last resort option, they reached out to Phil Spencer about Microsoft pot potentially um, acquiring them. And obviously we all know what has happened at this point. So apparently it wasn't really at least according to reports, Microsoft's idea to buy Activision Blizzard. It's more like Activision Blizzard was quietly shopping themselves after they realized they couldn't force change the narrative. Uh, it really sounds like what happened here is people were wondering, were the shareholders going to let Bobby Kotick uh, remain on as CEO? What were they going to do? And the shareholders likely put a ton of pressure on Bobby and basically said, look, we're done with Activision Blizzard. This is making us look bad for being associated with you. We want to cash out and we want to cash out now. You can't fix the reputation, which again, trying to buy media outlets is pretty shady. Um, yeah, we want that. We want the hell out. Maybe even after they, he contacted them, the, the you know, the, the major shareholders could have been like, wait a second, you tried to buy media outlets and control the narrative that way? Holy crap, do we want to sell and we want to sell all of it right now. Um, and that maybe prompted Bobby to reach out to Facebook first, which, why Facebook? So weird. And then obviously Microsoft. So uh, yeah, Microsoft obviously did agree to, to purchase it. And all reports indicate that Bobby will be let go upon approval of the purchase by the U.S. government. As soon as the U.S. government goes over all the paperwork around this and decides to approve of it, which should be in early 2023, uh, yeah, then uh, Microsoft uh, will be letting Bobby go reportedly. Uh, it won't be like they're straight up firing him. It's more like a forced retirement. They're just buying him out of his contract. He's going to be making a lot of money. It's going to cost about $270 million to buy him out of his contract. Uh, and this doesn't include his shares, by the way, which would also be purchased because Activision Blizzard is going to be wholly owned and they're going to buy out all of the shares. You wonder why they spent $68.7 billion or $69 billion or whatever it is. A lot of money. It's because they have to buy all the shares or at least a majority of them, including the ones from Bobby. They are kicking Bobby out of the company. Yeah, he gets rich, but that money could be touched by civil lawsuits still. So even though he's getting a payment from Microsoft, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that he's going to get to keep all that money. We'll see what happens if any lawsuits come out of all the stuff that happened at Activision Blizzard over the last God. It looks like back since Bobby took over, it really looks like Bobby is the instigator of the entire culture at the company. Now, moving on, uh, we have another story here. Uh, this is just kind of a weird one. And again, I've been criticizing Nintendo for this for a while, but this is at least some news. Banjo-Kazooie is launching on Nintendo Switch Online tomorrow. Nintendo told us that late night yesterday. I just thought that was kind of a weird thing for them to do. 
this is of course how they always do it they only give us like a day warning for nintendo directs they gave us a couple day warning for this even though they told us last month we were getting it they didn't give us any warning when they dropped nine genesis games last month so bottom line is i don't know why nintendo can't put this on a schedule can't be more consistent can't make consumers more happy so we actually know what to expect maybe they like the attention grabbing headlines maybe they like the they think they get better attention with i don't know randomly dropping things and then trending on twitter or something i have no idea i don't have the metrics on their end to show why they're doing this but i'm assuming it has something to do with the way social media functions at least i hope so or nintendo is just really disorganized and I, I just don't think that's the case all right our last story uh and the headline story yes folks the nintendo switch oled model has been discounted again it was originally discounted in the uk last holiday season but People didn't really count it as a discount because it was only about five pounds, which adds up to about $10 US roughly. Uh, and yeah, they actually uh, discounted it now by 10 pounds. The difference is the 10 pound discount, which amounts to $20 is only good today. And while supplies last at the time of recording, there were still supplies, links down in the description. This is from Nintendo themselves. This isn't other retailers. This is Nintendo themselves discounting Switch OLED in the UK. Now it's only good till midnight tonight. So good luck in getting Switch OLED for cheap. There was still, again, stock at the time of recording this. Now, the reason that I want to talk about this isn't so much that this is such a massive discount. We're talking about $20 US roughly. Um, it's not a big deal and it still costs significantly more there than it does here just because of exchange rates. But what I wanted to note about this is Nintendo themselves are doing these discounts on Switch OLED and I know it's an entirely different country and territory but it makes you wonder. This system that just came out last October has had its pricing messed around with despite being sold out by Nintendo themselves, by Nintendo of Europe. It makes you think is Nintendo just preparing for the day that they permanently drop the price, not just in the UK, but worldwide? I honestly think that we are probably approaching within the next four or five months of time when Switch OLED actually sees its price cut, even if it's continuing to sell out. And that is because, again, this is speculation, I firmly believe Nintendo at some point is going to stop making the OG Redbox version 2 Switch. They really don't have a reason to keep making it now because the OLED model is selling out like crazy, uses the same internals. Uh, you're really just affecting your ability to manufacture as many things as possible by making different versions of the exact same chipset. So why not just consolidate it all and just keep your Switch Lite and then Switch OLED, but then obviously drop the price of the OLED to make up for the fact that you no longer offer that $300 Switch. Again, I thought Nintendo was going to do this this entire time, but watching them like do these price drops now twice in the UK, this one being bigger than the last one, and the next one probably being bigger than even this one, even though it's sold out, just makes you go, you know what? Nintendo isn't just messing around with the prices to mess around, because they don't. They don't just mess around with the prices to mess around. So, just keep this in the back of your mind, that Nintendo's been messing around with pricing in the UK, could be as an experimental territory for changing the price everywhere else in the world. Anyways, just keep that keep that floating in there, all right? All right? I am Nintendo Rebel Jets from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we do have a podcast tonight. The Nintendo Prime Podcast is back for episode 35. Uh, it's just going to be me and Eric tonight. Um, our guest uh, our guests didn't want to be part of this podcast, which I, I don't blame them. We're actually going to be going over all the Pokemon Legends Arceus leaks and spoilers. We're going over everything we can find. So if you don't want spoilers, don't watch. It's clearly labeled. It's already set up on the channel. Um, but yeah, we hope that those of you that don't care about spoilers, don't care about leaks, don't even care about this game maybe, will tune in and see Eric and I talk about it because this game is very, very fascinating to me personally and we'll get into that obviously on the podcast. All right, folks. I'm Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime! Morphin Time! I like to take times like this every now and then to just thank all of you for being here. I can't tell you the incredible journey we've had on YouTube over the years, uh, and I'm not going to reflect on everything now. We, we do reflections every now and then, uh, but th there was a point during this month that I kept thinking, you know what? You know, we're in we're in the roughest month on YouTube there is, right? We're in the month where viewership's the lowest, ad revenue's the lowest, YouTube videos aren't pushed as much because there's not as much ad revenue, so YouTube doesn't have incentive to push videos as much. And it, it leads to you obviously maybe feeling a little down, or me feeling a little down, and I... I'm doing good, actually. I, I had a rough patch for a couple of days where I was like, man, you know, YouTube's not going too well. Um, but it's going all right. You know, I, I don't like to give life updates uh, too often. Um, 
my job is slashed my hours in half. Uh, we'll see if, uh, I, I was told that's not supposed to be permanent, but YouTube's kind of filling the gap. So if you guys see more videos than usual come out, like we had two come out yesterday, uh, that's because I have more time available to do YouTube. So expect to see more content uh, than you're used to, but hopefully that's okay with you guys, right? Like no one's complaining about more, are they? I hope not. So I just wanted to give you guys a little update that we're gonna be having a bit more content around the channel. Um, all right, peace out.